It was another year full of touching, shocking, incredible television. Spoilers incoming. Bye! I found a chocolate bunny! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV moments of 2016. Listen to your friend, Brandon. For this list, we're focusing on the moments from fictional or hosted television that left the biggest impact on audiences in 2016. That means we're excluding live events covered on television like sports, news, or concert events. So, in case you haven't clued in, a huge spoiler alert is now in effect. <gasps> Number 10. Prison All Along – Mr. Robot But sometimes, you need a vision to gain control. The first season of Mr. Robot proved that no viewer should assume they know the answers. Nothing is what it seems, and you're bound to be surprised. Communication is key, Elliot. The second season validated that notion, as its seventh episode gave us one of the year's best twists. Up to this point, our only interactions with protagonist Elliot Alderson were dull affairs in confined, claustrophobic spaces. A small room, a basketball court, a diner. Meanwhile, the rest of the cast had been busy fighting off a crippling worldwide hack. The show's dynamics just didn't make sense, until it was revealed that Elliot was, in fact, in prison. This stunning revelation opened up a world of questions, and reminded fans to always question what they see. You know you haven't been staying with your mother, right? I know. Number 9. Make Donald Trump Again Last Week Tonight with John Oliver Because it turns out the name Trump was not always his family's name. One biographer found that a prescient ancestor had changed it from, and this is true, Drumpf. Yes! <laughs> Drunk. A comedy series is an unlikely source of journalistic greatness, but John Oliver and his Last Week Tonight team have the unique ability to critically inform while maintaining excellent comedy standards. While it was great when it rained raisins, Oliver's best moment came when he gave America one of the most painfully enlightening yet horrifyingly funny reports on then-primary candidate Donald Trump and his tiny hands. It's the sound of a bottle of store brand root beer falling off the shelf in a gas station mini. In a scathing 20-minute indictment, Oliver took the internet by storm, revealing that Trump's ancestral last name is actually Drumpf. He then implored his fans and the country to make Donald Trump again, believing that the guttural last name better reflects the Donald and what he's like on the inside. We've actually filed paperwork to trademark the name Trump, and incidentally, when we own it, I will have the best word. Number 8. Poussey's Death Orange is the New Black. Hey, should we call for backup? A show that walks the tightrope between comedy and drama, Orange is the New Black brought fans to tears when it killed off one of its most beloved characters. Caught in a prison demonstration, Suzanne Crazy Eyes Warren begins panicking, becoming uncontrollable, and completely losing her faculties. When she sees a prison guard restraining Crazy Eyes, Poussey tries to get the guard to let her calm Suzanne down. But in an instant, it's Poussey who's on the ground, trapped beneath the weight of the guard. As things unfold around them, Suzanne violently attacks the guard. But Poussey is left helpless, and tragically, she eventually dies. It's an undeniably raw, powerful, and all-too-real moment. <laughs> Number 7. Dre Explains Police Brutality – Blackish Well, I will be in my room doing my Spanish homework before my teacher tases me. What? Excuse me, but that is not funny, and no. This is important. We're all going to sit and watch it together. Though at its core a sitcom, Blackish assumed a far more powerful tone when it chose not to shy away from the real world problems of 2016 by addressing police brutality towards the black community. In an argument with his wife over what to teach their children regarding police interactions, Anthony Anderson's Dre passionately illuminates a painful reality of being black in America. Remember when he got elected? And, and, and we felt like maybe, just maybe, 
we got out of that bad place and made it to a good place. Citing the delicate hope that permeated the African-American community after Barack Obama's election in 2008, Dre holds back tears as he explains to his wife that their children must know that they live in a world that is constantly trying to steal that hope away. That is the real world, Bo. And our children need to know that that's the world that they live in. Number six, Frank gets shot, House of Cards. Put your hand up on the wall. Sir, put it on the wall. After a criticized third season, House of Cards returned with a bang for season four. Audiences were stunned when, midway through the season, former investigative reporter and Underwood victim Lucas Goodwin shot Frank in an assassination attempt. I came out here to try to listen to what you want to say, but if all you're going to do is scream, <laughs> It's a complete shock to audiences and everyone around President Underwood, and the scene turns chaotic in an instant, flipping the season on its head. With Frank subsequently in a coma, Claire suddenly has a platform to influence again at the executive level. But of course, in addition to those major turns of events, viewers also had to suffer the tragic loss of Frank's loyal Secret Service agent, Edward Meacham. There has been an attempted assassination of the president. President Frank Underwood has been shot Number five, Eleven kills the Demogorgon, Stranger Things. Eleven, stop! <laughs> Set in the 80s with the style and pace of a Spielberg movie, Stranger Things is full of human experimentation, horror, and a parallel world. We're willing to bet that a lot of you guys went just as gaga over it as we did, and rightfully so. Although the show was full of egotastic moments, Eleven defeating the Demogorgon was definitely the highlight. The show's supernatural hero, the mysterious Eleven, or Elle, says goodbye to her best friend Mike before sacrificing herself to destroy the terrifying monster, overcoming her fears and saving the group. The season one finale manages to give audiences satisfaction and closure, while leaving the mystery open for what's to come. Number four, what door? Westworld. What's behind this door? What door? Created by Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy for HBO, this binge session waiting to happen has kept viewers in shock and awe since day one. I know things will work out the way they're meant to. As things progressed, we started to wonder which of the humans was going to be revealed as a host, but we were as surprised as Teresa to learn that it was the lovable and sympathetic Bernard Lowe. What is this, Bernard? Doesn't look like anything to me. Unaware of his robotic status or even his motivation, Bernard lures his one-time lady friend into a deadly trap set by Westworld demigod and creator Robert Ford. By the end of this scene, we're not only struggling with the fact that Bernard is a host, but Teresa's death and the reveal of Ford as a true villain also have us questioning the nature of our reality. You should be getting back, Bernard. We have a great deal of work to do on the new storylines. Number three, Marsha's Breakdown, American Crime Story. Goddamn, who turned on to Rick James? 2016 saw the debut of FX's much-hyped crime anthology series, with the premiere season covering the trial of the century, The People vs. O.J. Simpson. Although the series was chock full of great performances, including those from Cuba Gooding Jr., John Travolta, and David Schwimmer, one of the year's most incredible acting displays was Sarah Paulson's portrayal of Marsha Clark. I am offended by Mr. Cochran's remarks as a woman and as a mother. In the show's sixth episode, Paulson was tasked with capturing Marsha's complete breakdown after being ridiculed both in court and in the media. Unfairly targeted and vilified for little more than a haircut, Paulson creates a moving depiction of a person buried underneath the weight of the world. I'm not a public personality. This isn't what I do. I don't know how to do this. Number two, Ramsey Bolton is defeated. Game of Thrones. You suggested one-on-one -on -one combat, didn't you? Sometimes on Game of Thrones, a beloved character dies, and we collectively mourn. Order! Order! Sometimes a beloved character comes back to life, and we collectively cheer. 
And sometimes a character so despised gets his comeuppance that we collectively yell, suck it. It's hard to nail down a single moment from the penultimate episode of season six, as the episode is mainly comprised of one of the best battle sequences ever. A sequence we can mark as the moment television equaled cinema's ability to create massive, awe-inspiring spectacles. <laughs> But of course, the sweetest moment of all was when the Northern Bastards meet face to face, and there was no doubt that the good guys were finally going to earn a win. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. I doctored the copies, I paid the kid at the shop to lie for me. It is insane how you got every detail exactly right. Harrison looks from the outside to be your average teenager. He goes to school, plays video games, even listens to music in his room. But there's one difference. I'm a 35-year-old white man. Harrison, born Antoine Smalls, has transracial identity, identifying as Harrison Booth, a 35-year-old white man from Colorado. Number one, Negan kills Glenn, The Walking Dead. Back to it. You can breathe, you can blink, you can cry. Hell, we were all doing that. Fans of The Walking Dead comic book have long awaited the arrival of its most brutal villain, Negan. This in our pants yet? Making his first appearance at the tail end of season six, Negan didn't really make his mark until the season seven premiere, when he started dispatching cast members faster than anyone was prepared for. Holding Rick's group hostage, Negan first kills Abraham. You're all gonna be doing that. That in itself was brutal, but what landed Negan on this list was what happened a few moments later, when he also murdered Glenn. In front of a bawling Maggie, Negan caves in Glenn's skull, leaving his wife and his fans horrified. I'm just getting started. Do you agree with our list? I hate it. I guess I hate it too. What do you think were the best television moments of 2016? I want to try to hear what it is that you disagree with me about. For more unique top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. All memory of you will disappear.